Last class we discussed about some out of box questions, right? Does the brain really feel the pain? Yes. The answer is the brain doesn't feel pain. You know why? Because there is no pain receptors present in it. Then why do we get headaches? Headache is something related to the tissues or the pain associated with the tissues surrounding it. Okay? Uh, let it be managers or let it be the blood vessel or anything related to it and not exactly the brain that's why it's said to be headaches not brain aches one more question we discussed you remember what will happen to your brain if you're very happy and what will happen to your brain if you're very sad so when you're very happy these good hormones or happy hormones like dopamine oxytocin serotonin endorphins all these hormones are released and make your body very energetic but if you're very sad or you know uh, if you're emotionally if you're unstable all these hormone levels happy hormone level will go down and make you very stressed or unhappy right so let's stay happy and have fun right with the same energy let's get into the lesson so last class we discussed about brain right like how a brain is protected inside the skull you know how delicate it is and we also discussed about the parts of the brain right and uh, what is the other part of uh, central nervous system spinal cord so if you run your hand down uh, in the middle of the middle of your back you will find a hard bumpy structure so this hard bumpy structure is nothing but vertebral column it's vertebral column or your backbone which protects your spinal cord so your spinal cord gives uh, complete support to your body right it, because it's a backbone and it's the continuation of the medulla oblongata here it's the continuation of here you have brain stem medulla oblongata is here so spinal cord is a continuation of medulla oblongata so the main function of spinal cord is to conduct a uh, sensory and motor impulses to and from the brain to and from the brain and more than that it acts as a reflex it is a main center for reflex action now let's see how does the nervous system or nervous tissue how does it cause action action in the sense uh, let it be a reflex action for example when you see a bright object immediately you close your eyes when you touch a hot object immediately you take, take away your hand we have discussed about this already right so now we are going to discuss like how this action takes place you know very well that the final message is sent to the muzzle so your muzzle uh, receives a final message and it works accordingly now let us see how this action is performed see stimulus um, stimul uh, i mean uh, when the sense organ when it receives the information from the stimulus what happens the information or the impulse is sent to the central nervous system so the central nervous system includes spinal cord or your brain so in this region what happens information is received a decision is made and as a result of, a result of that what uh, what is uh, generated your response in the form of what signals so the signal is sent to the motor nerve the nerve ending of the motor nerves you know they are in contact with the muscular fiber and you know very well that muscles are made up of what protein protein cells or proteins right so when it receives when the muscle when it receives the information there is a change in the rearrangement of proteins which means uh, there are some special proteins that can change their shape as well as their arrangement okay they change the shape as well as their arrangement when when it receives the information so when there is a change in the shape and the size what happens in this case a spindle fibred fibered muscle will become what shortened it will become a shorter form so when it becomes shortened what happens there it there comes a response so uh, uh, there is a new arrangement in these type of proteins which give uh, you know give the muscle cells a shorter form so this is how we take away or we pull away our hand from the harmful object or any anything you know that causes danger 
So far we discussed about control and coordination in animals. Now let's get into plants. Plants, do they have a nervous system or um, muscles? They don't have, right? They, uh, plants have neither a nervous system nor muscles to control any activity. But still, they respond to stimuli, isn't it? When we touch the leaves of a mimosa plant or touch-me-not plant, what happens? They begin to fold up and they droop, right? When a seed germinates, the root goes down, the stem comes up. What happens over here? Here you can see some sort of movement, right? In this clip, here also you can see some sort of movement. The leaves are actually moving, it is folding. Here, the movement is due to growth, whereas here, the movement is not due to growth. It is called respond to stimuli. So plants also respond to stimuli. So based on this, movement of plant can be classified into two. One is movement due to growth and movement um, independent of growth. We'll see immediate response to, response to stimulus. I said, right, this is movement independent of growth. So in this case, how does a plant detect the touch and how do the leaves move in response? See, if you think of where exactly the plant is touched, so one particular point the plant is touched, but the information is sent to all the leaves, right? So, so even in plants, it is very clear that the plants also use electrical and chemical means to convey the information, okay? But they don't have any specialized tissue like animals to pass the information. And finally, again as in animals, some cells must change their shape in order to, uh, you know, in order for movement to happen, right? I said we already discussed about this. Like animal cells, they change the shape and size, you know, in order to make what? Movement. So same like that, even plants, you know, they also uh, uh, change their shape by changing the amount of water in it. So either it results in swelling of the cell or it results in shrinking of the cell. So this is how plants respond to the stimuli. Like some plants, you know, if you see pea plant, they always need a support. Okay, so these tendrils, these thread-like structures are called tendrils. The tendrils are very uh, sensitive to touch. So when they come in contact with any support, let it be a woody part or any other plant or any object, when they come in contact, they will cling to it. So the point which is in contact or the part which is in contact with the object, they grow very slow, slowly. The reason is, if they grow very fast, just imagine, they will lose the ability, they will lose the support. So, in order to avoid that, the part, the part which is in contact with the object will grow very slowly. Here, the growth is also directional. So, it appears as if the plant is moving. Now, based on this, we will see some type of movement with some examples. So, you will get a clear picture. We discussed about growth dependent and growth independent movement, right? So, now we will get into an important term. What are the different types of movement you can see? Okay, we will see well, based on the stimulus. Like what are the different types of movements based on the stimulus? Tropism means any part, any plant part that grows in response to a stimuli is called uh, tropism. So here stimuli can be light, water, chemical or even gravity. Okay, so any part of the plant that grows in response to any kind of environmental stimulus is called tropism. So there are many types of tropism. Photo, geotropism, thickmotropism, nairotropism, chemotropism. It's a very easy topic and it is also frequently asked questions. So please concentrate. Let's get into the first one. Geotropism. So geotropism means what? When plant, any part of the plant that grows towards a gravity, that grows towards a gravitational pull is called geotropism. 
okay so when it moves towards a gravity it is called positive geotropism when it grows away from the gravity it's called negative geotropism so seeing the picture you can clearly you can say that the root part it grows towards a gravity and the stem part or the shoot part it grows away from the gravity hydrotropism the part of the plant that grows towards the water or in response to water is called hydrotropism here root shows root grows in response to water right or it grows towards a for water right so root shows positive hydrotropism shoot shoot grows away from the water so this shows negative hydrotropism the directional movement of plant in response to a chemical is called chemotropism a very good example for this is uh, during fertilization process the growth of pollen tube here you can see the formation of pollen tube right growth of pollen tube towards the ovule the it is actually growing towards the ovule no it is because of some production of chemicals over there so this process is called chemotropism it is due to cream chemotropism okay the next one is phototropism here photo means what photo means light so the directional movement of any part of the plant in response to light is called phototropism so again it can be positive phototropism negative phototropism so the part of the plant which grows in order to uh, in i mean uh, which uh, in response to light in response to the, to the direction of the light it's called positive phototropism if you see the root region it grows away from the light it moves away from the light so this region shows i mean the root region shows negative phototropism next is thigmotropism thigmo means sense of touch so we discussed about this already right so when uh, when some plants when they come in contact with any object or any other plant they cling to it right it's because of because this region that is the gentle region has it is very sensitive to touch so this shows thigmotropism which means uh, a movement of any part of the plant in response to touch so finally a recap i'm going to show you this flow chart so movement in plants can be classified into two growth dependent growth independent so growth independent immediate response to stimulus like i showed you that uh, touch me not plant isn't it so it is a growth independent one so thigmotropism can also be come under it can also come under that movement uh, depend on growth tropic movements just now we discussed phototropism towards light geotropism towards gravity chemotropism towards chemical hydrotropism towards water so with this let me end up the session and see you all in the next class thank you